Hey DIYers, we're back in the studio to demonstrate the application process of our white marble countertop paint kit. If you're ready to transform the entire look of your kitchen, grab a kit and let's get started. Everything you need to transform your old countertops into the look of white marble is included in the kit. You will also want these additional household items within reach. You can expect this project to take you a full weekend, and if you have any questions throughout the process, we're here to help. You can reach us by phone, chat, or email. Before you start your project, watch this entire video and read the instructions and quick start guide included in the kit, as they are meant to complement each other. It is also important that you measure your countertops beforehand to make sure you have the correct amount of product for your space. Refer to the included quick start guide for more information. This step is critical in making sure the epoxy top coat cures correctly. To begin your prep, no sanding is required for a typical Formica or laminate countertop. Just thoroughly clean your countertops with an SOS or Brillo pad to remove any dirt and grease from the surface. Then rinse and remove the cleaner with water because any remaining residue could keep the paint from adhering. Use a high quality painter's tape like frog tape to protect surfaces around your workspace from accidental contact with the paint materials. Tape two rows on the walls above your backsplash and one strip around the rim of your sink and cooktop if you have one. Use the included tarps to protect your cabinets, appliances, and floor. Use small pieces of tape to hold the tarps in place and run long pieces of tape along the underside of the countertops. This will help remove any drips before they harden. Then, trim pieces from the provided tarp to use as covers for the sink, faucet, and any appliances above your countertops. Now you're ready to apply the white primer. You'll need two coats to cover most surfaces, but with darker colored surfaces you may need a third. If you have a connected backsplash, start here. First, edge in the top and bottom with a two inch foam brush. Continue around the corners and edges and use the fabric roller to fill in the rest. For the best coverage, edge in two to three foot sections at a time. Then immediately roll that section so your brush strokes blend in with the rolled areas. Allow the first coat to dry for at least an hour. It may appear streaky or uneven, but you will obtain full coverage after the second coat. Repeat the same process in dry time for your second coat of white primer. While the primer is drying, it is the perfect time to research examples of white marble. This will give you an idea of how the veins look and give you inspiration for the finish you want to create. After you've done some research, spend some time mapping out the direction you want your veins to flow. It helps to draw the basic layout of your countertops and create a guideline for your veins. Now that you've completed your prep work and the primer is dry, use the kit's included practice board to try out the veining process before moving to your countertops. Begin your vein by gently holding the artist brush and lightly dragging the gray veining mineral across the surface of your countertop. Slightly twist your brush as you go to emulate the flows of natural marble. Then spray your vein with water using the kit's missing bottle. You'll know you used enough water when the gray mineral starts to bleed. Lightly dab your vein using the two inch brush. You'll notice that the edges of the vein will start to fade into the white background, creating the characteristic mineral foundations of natural marble. We've chosen four common vein styles to show you. The first is the extended vein. For sections of countertops that require long, continuous veins, like on an island, you'll want to break the veins into segments. 
Mist each segment individually, apply your softening techniques, and blend each segment so they appear as one connected vein. The next style is the Y vein. To accomplish this, create a new vein that branches off of your existing vein to create a Y, or upside down Y. Then use your softening techniques to blend. Next is a crescent vein. Start with a vein that has a curved segment, then on the inside of the curved portion, create another mirror image curve and connect. When finished, it should look like a loop. The final vein style is the ripple vein. Create the ripple by painting a parallel vein a few inches away from another vein, following its curves. You can choose to either connect the ripple to its partner, or run parallel all the way to the edge of the countertop. If you don't like the way a vein looks, or you don't like its placement, simply spray it with water to flood the area and wipe it away. Start fresh or move on to another section of your countertop. We recommend creating your major or prominent veins first before painting the edges of your countertop or backsplash. Start out with two or three major veins per three foot section. That way you leave room for additional veins or highlights. It is easier to add more veins rather than take them away once they dry. For backsplash veins, use the veins you already created on the surface of your countertops and connect. Follow the direction of the veins for a more natural appearance. Be cautious not to overspray the veins with water and watch for runs and drips. For the edges, connect your veins to the ones you created on your countertops and follow the direction of the flow, just like on a slab of real marble. Now that your major veins are complete, take a step back to see if you'd like to add more depth by adding accent veins. Accent veins should be supplements and should not distract from your major veins. To create accent veins, lightly mist the area first so it's easier to diffuse the veining mineral. Then use the same technique as your major veins to make thin, wispy strokes. Feather and dab the area, over blending until it looks faded or shadowy. For additional depth, lightly sponge flecks of the white highlight mineral on or around your veins. It helps to dip the sponge in the white mineral and dab the excess on a paper plate or towel before applying. Dab in a gentle up and down motion, barely touching your countertops for subtle texture. When you've finished applying the white highlight, Wait a minimum of four hours for the veins to dry before applying the epoxy top coat. Now you're ready to apply the top coat. Gianni Marble comes with three sets of epoxy and each set is made up of two parts, a liquid activator and a liquid resin. Each set covers a six foot long section of countertop. To mix your first set, pour an entire can of activator into a can of resin, making sure to empty all of the contents.
Next, thoroughly stir the mixture for 3 minutes and 30 seconds, making sure to scrape the sides and bottom of the can. You want to mix quickly to keep from splashing any of the contents out of the container. When you finish stirring, immediately pour the entire mixture onto the first section of your countertops. It helps to pour the mixture in three streams to ensure even coverage. Start by pouring one stream at the base of your backsplash, one in the center of your countertops, and one close to the edge. If you have an object within your six foot section, such as a sink, simply use the proportionate amount for one side of the sink and continue on the opposite side until the entire mixture has been used. Within the same section, use an included 2-inch angle brush and transfer some of the epoxy mixture to your attached backsplash, gently coating it as you brush along your 6-foot section. Continue cutting in the edges of your section with some of the remaining mixture on your countertops. Next, use the foam roller to evenly distribute the epoxy over the surface in your section. Since the epoxy is self-leveling, try not to overwork your application. It helps to hold the handle gently between your fingers and thumb and lightly push the epoxy over the countertops. This will keep you from gripping the handle too tight and applying too much pressure. Too much pressure can spread the epoxy mixture too thin and cause defects in the cured finish. To make sure they are fully coated, Allow epoxy to run off the edges onto the tarps, then lightly roll them. You want a good layer of epoxy on your edges since they experience the most wear and friction. After you've covered your first section, mix a second set of epoxy and continue onto your next section blending the two sections together to avoid creating a seam. Continue the same process until your entire countertop is coated. Remember, one set of epoxy only covers 12 square feet or six running feet of standard countertops. Extending it further will result in imperfections. Once you've rolled on your top coat, do not add more unless you find bare spots. Doing so can create unwanted blemishes in your finish. If your remaining section of countertop is less than 6 feet, use the appropriate amount of epoxy to cover the area. For instance, if your final section is 3 feet, mix the last full set of epoxy and only use half. Remember to gently guide the epoxy over your surface rather than rolling it on. Keep in mind, if you hear any stickiness while applying the epoxy, it is too thin in that area and it will not cure properly. Please read the epoxy quick start guide for all of our helpful tips and tricks. Once you've finished applying your epoxy, grab a bright light and closely inspect your countertops for bare spots, bubbles, and lint. To fix a small bare spot, use a 2-inch brush to drizzle a small amount of epoxy onto the spot and then dab lightly. For air bubbles or lint, use tweezers to gently pop the bubbles or pull out the piece of lint. Just make sure not to use the tweezers after an hour. Slowly and carefully remove the painter's tape between one and two hours after applying the epoxy. If you peel it off too early, the finish will run under the taped areas. If you peel it off too late, the tape will become cemented to your countertops.
After those first two days, refrain from setting anything heavy on your countertops. Heavy objects can leave impressions in the epoxy. When caring for your new countertops, we recommend using our specially formulated Gianni countertop cleaner. You can also read our written instructions to see other cleaners that may be used, as harsh chemicals can dull or damage the finish. Just like you would with any countertop, always use a cutting surface when preparing food and a hot pad or protective barrier when placing hot objects on your counters. Treating your countertops with the proper care will help maintain the shine, durability, and beauty. We hope you love your new marble countertops. Don't forget to follow us on social media and visit our website for additional resources. Thanks for watching.